It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and you guessed it, I am back visiting the Coral Reef. This installation is just about ready to celebrate its first birthday. We are in University City, a little, um, not quite in the middle of San Diego. It's, uh, it's still, um, it's a little coastal, but not super coastal, but everything looks fantastic. Can you even stand the color on this Crassula Argentia sunset? And remember this, this installation, uh, our clients, Michael and Cesar had some of these magnificent plants in their collection and they allowed me to use them like that euphorbia in that giant vase and behind it, that lactia crest in that big uh, planter that Michael built. so good and something that I don't think that you guys got to see because Michael added this on after the fact was the water feature back there see the sea dragon amongst all the Sansevieria Isn't that genius just a perfect touch and then of course Michael has all of his creatures there are little creatures just scattered throughout the garden. Can you spy with your little eye the eel in that pot rock? So cool. But they're so diligent and loving and care for this garden so meticulously. I haven't had to even think about maintenance yet. We were talking and I suggested you know, maybe next year in the late spring or early fall would be a good time to come do some heavy lifting. But right now, it doesn't need any heavy lifting. Everything is just kind of settling in. But they have had so much fun with this garden. I guess some of the San Diego tour companies drive the big tour buses down the street. <laughs> to see the garden. Look at this Echeveria, what it's doing. Look at the, how it's a perfect circle. And it's crenunculating. This is the kind of thing I geek out on big time when plants do weird stuff. How gorgeous is that? It's perfection. Oh God, this Euphorbia was in Michael's collection. that we got from KRC are so great. Look at that crest. Big green monster back there. So pretty, right? Ooh. Down here, there's Gasteria. So un unusual. That looks like a sea creature. But yeah, these quadricolors. See, look, we got... We got one trying to come up there, and we got one coming up there. So yeah, these are gonna need to whip in a chair at some point for sure. Here's another perspective of that seahorse fountain with the Sansevieria. Oh, and then here you can kind of get a perspective from the back of the installation. And this giant milli I can't take credit for that. That was here. but there was already a stand here. It was actually hidden underneath the milii and I pulled it forward and added some more plants. Then a couple of months after we completed the coral reef, which ended right there, we added this installation, which he calls the Cozen's side garden. It's also looking great. Now they do have these ornamental pears. Ugh, 
don't even get me started. I did get them to get rid of some trees. They had some really hideous, ugly trees where we now see succulents, uh, but they are very, very emotional about their trees. So I said, okay, as long as you understand, there's gonna be detritus, and they did, and they're really good about coming out here and swooping it up. Um, you'll also notice their cordon steel edging. Isn't this cool? They were having issue with a little bit of um, the Cali Gold, you know, coming onto the sidewalk and they just really wanted to create just a, a barrier so people hopefully would keep their dogs out of the garden. It's been mildly successful. Look at that jasper purple boulder. And then the Crassula undulata. You know, I talk about this plant a lot. This one's quite mature. I don't remember the story behind it. I think um, that might have been here because I can't believe that one little five gallon would be that big already. But Michael also built these planters, which are super cool. And I can't believe how many new mangaves I've discovered since not even a year ago. We have just got jaguars in this garden because I didn't know there were any other mangaves available. And the Fred Ives is really pretty and well stressed. These, these Fred Ives, got thirsty or are thirsty see how they're kind of a little bit not not the thr not the most thrilled not quite as big and full as say this guy they could definitely benefit from a little more water all the Sansevieria he has so many the all of these Sansevieria varieties were his he had these in his collection and the Orchialis copper spoons. When this plant is in the right spot, the color cannot be beat. It is so gorgeous. More Sansevieria for days. But yeah, this just goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. And then this, he had more of the Dazzlerian longissimums. Um, some got gifted to, to neighbors and friends of his, but we managed to salvage this one and I'm so glad we did. It just looks so good. You can kind of get the perspective that I'm seeing. Isn't that beautiful in the landscape? Yeah. Then he had these milii up here in this raised bed. I added more, and I added Portolacaria minima and Senecio uh, chalk sticks. Because he had some Senecio, you know that's not a plant that I use a lot, um, but he already had some, so I thought why not. He really loved the idea of the blue against the kind of you know, pink of the milii and the this tan uh, brown of the of the hardscape in the windows and this was a bold move right i mean this euphorbia just i these <sighs> You know, some places they absolutely thrive, the Synodenium grantii, and others they just look like crap most of the year. But I have found that this, this climate here in University City, as far um, northwest as Bayho in Claremont, uh, that's Claremont with an I, not Claremont with an E, um, it does really well. It stays fairly well leafy. It doesn't don't fall off. But yeah, the Portolacaria minima is a winner winner. It's a little, I've told you this before, it grows a little slower than the uh, Variegata and it's a little easier to control. I mean, look at the combo of the Sedum Vera Higgins. How pretty is that? And look at, oh my goodness, that Senecio in here. That's Serpens. 
I wonder if that's what he had and I brought in the other, or if it was the other way around. But anywho, ooh, this crassel is super cool. So let me come down here and then we'll look at it from the other side. Lots of Mancave Jaguars. Yeah, the Sinisio is really pretty, I must admit. A little bit of Falcata down here. Pretty, pretty. And the Crassula Lemon and Lime. Very nice. But look at that. Huh? right yeah so what a gift to all of his neighbors and all passerbys get to enjoy the stunning garden we'll take you back around real quick we'll just kind of do one more loop the court and steel edging he ordered that online I'm not sure from where um, but I'm, I'm really pleased with that. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Woo! Okay, around. And get back out from the stream a little bit. Here's another thing that he added after the fact built this little structure here and added these little planters and then look what he found on his Fred Ives look at this precious thing that crest that mermaid's tail isn't that beautiful he's hardening it off and he's gonna plant it in the back which is a good idea then show you oh looky there Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous aloe. Hmm. Plicatillus is one of my faves, and that staging is meticulously beautiful. And then the coin plant here. And here's the back side. Get a perspective of that. And then just one more thing to show you. The Agavoides. So he had all of the little, the little Agavoides, and I added the two big ones. Isn't that so pretty? I can't wait for these to really get their legs because all the little ones were just popped in as cuttings. So they're still kind of trying to figure it out. Your driftwood, you always use driftwood in your installations if you can. And here you can see I used it as retention. Give you a sense of the elevation if I get down low, right? See that? Look at how the portal of Cari is just sneaking through. I know we could stay here and gaze at this for days, couldn't we? But we've all got stuff to do. So I will say this is Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with a almost one year update of the gorgeous epic coral reef installation in University City and your succulent tip of the day. Love you guys. Bye.